A horse's first ride is a big moment. If it goes well, it sets him up for a successful career. If it goes poorly, his confidence takes a huge hit and his training backslides. Going into day four of the Colt starting clinic, professional clinician Jeff Davis knew it was going to be a monumental day. The horses would all be ridden for the first time. For everyone involved, it'd be a make or break moment in their clinic journey. So we're on to day four now, and we're basically ready for our first ride. Now, just keep in mind, if, if Jeff and I were starting colts just at the ranch, we probably wouldn't ride them till day seven, okay? Maybe even day eight, but usually day seven, day six, somewhere around there, okay? We do a full week of groundwork, and then they're ready to ride. But because this colt starting clinic is basically 11 days long, we don't have as much time. So we've got to move the time frame up just a little bit to get enough done to where we've got enough days to complete other things. So that's why we're riding them on day four. The only reason I bring that up is I don't want everybody to think that we would typically ride a colt on day four. Now you understand why when we do colt starting demonstrations on tour, and sometimes we ride the colt at the end of the you know three hour demonstration, and sometimes we don't, I don't really like riding them. I don't ride them at all anymore myself, but I don't even like putting Kristen or Jeff or anybody else on them at the end of a cult starting clinic because we're just, we're cramming too much stuff in in a three hour demonstration, okay? So that's why for us, we take seven days to do this, but we're on day four. So by this stage, 95% of the cults in a cult starting clinic are ready. If they're not, we'll wait till day five, etc. But Jeff's got enough skill set. He's been around me for years now. He knows what he needs to do. He knows how to make a judgment call. The day got started in the arena reviewing groundwork exercises. When the horses were warmed up, Jeff introduced the head shy exercises. As he took the class through the teaching steps, Mitch worked with Jacqueline's gelding. We went into some of the head shy exercises. We have a few horses in here that are in particular kind of funny around their head when we move our hands around, when we pick the lead rope up. When we approach them to rub them on the face, they're a little defensive. So that's a great exercise to get that out of them. We always tell people that the, the sensitizing with the lead rope and the stick and string is gonna get the majority of that defensiveness out of them in most areas. But you're gonna have to go out of your way in a few other areas if you really wanna go find all of that defensiveness and reactiveness and uh, that, that, like I said, just overall uh, just spookiness. If you're gonna get it out of them, you're gonna have to really go looking for that, okay? So the head shy exercises are a good one for that. There's, there's several that, things that you can do there. And they are general concepts, you know. I, I don't, I'm not gonna lock somebody into place on you have to do one particular thing. You know, use those concepts. Uh, and then from there, if you find something in particular the horses worry about, go address that. After the demonstration with Jacqueline's gelding, participants worked on the exercises with their horses. When the horses were doing well, Jeff encouraged everyone to get creative with how they desensitized their horses. Some people added crazy hand motions. Some added loud noises, and some took their hats off and waved them. <laughs> Jeff taught the class slap and tap, an intermediate level exercise. To do the exercise, you slap and tap the horse with the palms of your hands in a firm but gentle manner. As you move your hands with rhythm all over his body, they'll make a clapping noise. Not only does the exercise desensitize your horse to touch, but to noise as well. 
It's a beneficial exercise to teach before riding a horse because it prepares him for you touching him while you're in the saddle. This is an intermediate desensitizing exercise, but it's really good to get the colts comfortable with that slapping and tapping sensation all over their body. You're not slapping them so hard that it's actually gonna hurt them, but enough that it makes a bit of a clapping noise up against their body. It's more, it's more the sound and that overall slapping sensation that gets that jump and the defensiveness out of the horses. A lot of horses are good about you rubbing them, but when you start kind of slapping on their body like that, they'll get a little tight and want to move around. And we had a few colts that wanted to move around. This was really good for Dakota's colt especially, the, the little red colt. He's pretty defensive there, and he's kind of thin-skinned anyway, pretty sensitive. So we needed, uh, we needed to go, kind of go the extra mile on that one, and that was a great exercise. It couldn't have come at a better time for him. As participants practice the exercise, Jeff reminded them to keep a consistent rhythm with their hands and to be on the lookout for, oh no, don't touch me there spots, those areas on the horse's body where he gets defensive and doesn't like to be touched. When you find one, Jeff said, stay in that exact spot until the horse keeps his feet still and relaxes. Then you move on to the next area of his body. To improve the horse's ability to come off halter and lead rope pressure, Jeff introduced the sending exercise. As he talked the class through the teaching steps of the exercise, Josh worked with Wade's cold. We went ahead and added the sending exercise, getting the horses comfortable sending between the person and the fence. This is a good exercise to get the horses really coming off that halter pressure. You know, some of the colts don't lead real good at this point. You know, they're a little green. You know, they're all at different levels. Some of the horses have had quite a bit of the fundamentals and, and some of them are, are not quite as far along. So they, they're kind of dragging on the halter and they're kind of leaning on us a little. And the sending is a great way to get that out of them. When we point, really get them coming up off of the halter pressure get them comfortable between us and a tight, narrow space. That's a, it's a really good exercise to, to get the horses used to spooky objects. Participants did a great job teaching the sending exercise to their horses. The horses started following the feel of the halter and lead rope better and moving through the gap next to the fence with confidence. Like what you see? Then get the app, join the club, and watch it all. Anytime, anywhere, on any device. Experience the mobile method today. With the horses relaxed and tuned into the participants, it was time to saddle them. While everyone was desensitizing their horses to their saddle pads and preparing to put the saddles on, a truck and trailer cut through the arena to unload cattle in the cutting pen and then exited the arena. Thanks to all the work participants have done with their horses, the Colts handled the distraction in stride. Today, for the first time, participants saddled their horses from the left side. For today's saddling in the outdoor arena as a big group, we saddled the colts from the left side of their body. You know, typically when people are at home, they're gonna saddle the horses from the left, they lead them from the left, they put the bridle on from the left, they get on from the left. There's no particular reason why, there's no rule that says you have to do this, but it tends to be what, what most of us get in a habit of doing. We explained that we saddle the horses from the right side of their body initially so that we don't have to change sides an extra time to let the cinches down, let the breast collar down, and so on. At this point though, the colts are standing well enough and they're quiet enough 
that we can go ahead and start adding that on the left side of the body and we're not as worried about changing sides. And you're gonna see more and more of that as the cult starting goes on. We're gonna get a little bit more confident. We're gonna start treating them a little more like they're broke horses, okay? It's, it's early days to, to completely let all of our, our safety and extra steps go you know, by the wayside, but we are, we are gradually heading in that direction. Everybody saddled from the left side. They're leaving the stirrups down. At, we can throw that saddle on. We're throwing it on more and more confident every day. Like we treat them like they're more like old broke horses. So we're getting closer to the point that we can start saddling with that lead rope over our arm. And then we'll eventually progress to where we can saddle them, dial it up to the fence. And then later on on the patient's poles at the end of the clinic. When the horses were saddled, participants eased them off to do lunging for respect. They were looking for the horses to calmly head out onto the circle and then pick up the trot when cued to. That saddling went really well as a big group. We didn't have any of the colts getting tight or wanting to buck with the saddle. They all progressed really well today. So that tells us that we're on the right track. That tells us that we're doing enough preparation uh, because the colts are getting better like that. If, if we start seeing horses really fidgeting around and still getting tight and wanting to buck and carry on, we're missing something. We need to make some adjustments and we get, to get in there and, and spend some extra time and give a few horses some extra attention if that's happening. So today was a really good sign that we're moving in the right direction. When the horses were moving out confidently with the saddles, Jeff had the class put the hackamores on the horses and then start stirrup driving. Because they'd soon be getting in the saddle, Jeff told everyone to double and triple check that their horses were confident about the stirrups being flapped and waved next to them. We have a few horses in this clinic. Uh, one of the horses, Mandy's, it's got a little kind of a, a buckskin mare. Uh, and there's another horse in there as well, another a little red gelding of Haley's. Both of these horses are pretty bad about pulling on that halter and lead rope when we're circle driving, when we're stirrup driving, when we're lunging, okay? If you look at both of them, both of them sort of have gas pedal problems as well. They're not real good about going forward. When we point, they want to drag you sideways rather than forward. So I can't stress to you enough, do a really good job in that round pinning about when you point, getting those horse to associate that point with go forward. Not go sideways, but go forward. You can't stay in the round pin forever, okay? So you have to come out of the, the round pin and get in the arena at some point because you got to see what you're working with. But the better job you do of your preparation and your foundation, you're going to hear Clinton say this time and time again. You know, prepare the horses for success. Set them up for success, not failure. If you look at the method, the method is extremely structured for that reason. Each exercise builds on the one before it, and that's why it's in that order. That's why Clinton's put it in this order. You know, he's had years of experience critiquing and, you know, sort of tweaking these exercises, and, and he has changed them over the years because we feel like it works more effectively this way. You know, this iteration of the method, if you will, this generation of the method, it's down pretty pat. I mean, we, we really don't have a lot of things that, that Clinton feels like we need to change, and that's it's because of that. We've done enough of these clinics. He's done so much teaching and so, has spent so much time that we've we found that these exercises are in that order for a reason. It works best for the horses and the people. In a clinic like this, we have to break our own rules a little bit. You know, we have to prioritize some of the exercises out of order because they're going to help us prepare the horses to saddle and be ridden a little quicker. As the clinic goes on, I explained to the class today, we're gonna start moving more back into the order that you would typically see in the fundamentals level 
and we won't be jumping around quite so much. But when you do have to jump around, you're going to see some of these issues like we see with Mandy's and like we see with Haley's horse where they really want to pull on us. Okay, And these are just adjustments that we have to make. We understand to some extent that that's going to happen, but we need to spend a little extra time and get those horses coming off of that halter pressure a little bit better. It's not one thing that's going to fix something like that. It's going to be multiple exercises, circle driving, stirrup driving, sending. All of these things are going to help that, and they'll keep making improvement every day. After practicing stirrup driving, participants let their horses come to a stop and relax. They took the opportunity to desensitize them. They jiggled the cinches, flapped the stirrups, jumped up and down next to the horses, they did anything they could think of to try to get bucked off the horses from the ground and prepare them for the first ride. Want more? Get more! The No Worries Club is the best way to get the most out of your training experience. Stick around to find out more. Hey mate, Clint Anderson here. For the past 20 years, I've devoted my life to creating the best training tools and videos available to help bring my method to you. But there's only one problem. You can't bring your TV into the arena. That's why we've been hard at work developing a new platform to deliver the method to you in a whole new way. A way that brings 20 years of horsemanship and puts it in the palm of your hand. Introducing the mobile method. It's part of the new Down Under digital experience and it makes learning the method easier than ever before. Let me show you how it works, mate. Now you can always have access to the method, even when you're on the go or at the barn. The Down Under Horsemanship app gives you access to your digital training kits and allows you to download videos and training content directly to your mobile device or view them on your computer. The Down Under Horsemanship app also offers over 86 hours of free, in-depth training content. No Worries Club members will have full access to Clinton's ever-growing training library and a massive amount of members-only features and information. And the best part is, you can view and interact with each lesson on your mobile device or computer, giving you ultimate access to the method anytime and any place. The method is the key to getting the most out of your partnership with your horse. We want everybody to experience the difference it will make. That's why we created three new ways for you to get the training content you need at the price you want. Our basic level allows you to purchase and download training content to your device at our standard price with no annual fee. When you become a No Worries Club member for $19.99 a month, you get up to 50% discount on any of your purchases. Plus, you get eight digital videos and four digital journals a year and access to the No Worries Club website, the largest collection of method material and resources in the world. Plus, you can become part of our social network and chat with thousands of other folks just like you. If you want the ultimate experience, mate, the premium membership is for you. You get all the benefits of the No Worries Club, a printed copy of our No Worries Club quarterly journal, and access to all of the method and the professional series kit training videos. Altogether, that's thousands of dollars of horse training and 20 years of horsemanship delivered right to your fingertips. So there you have it folks, the new mobile method app is the easiest and most effective way to deliver the maximum amount of knowledge at a minimal amount of time. And with the new No Worries Club, you can be assured you're going to get exactly what you need at a price that's right for you. It's a free download, so what are you waiting for mate? Get started today. Start your digital training experience today. Visit our website and download the Down Under Horsemanship app to experience the method in a whole new way.